All right, last talk of the session. This is Bray Webb, Correct. and he's going to be talking about uh, term graph optimizations using Isabel Hole, which is uh, the second Isabel term rewriting talk, and I'm delighted of the day. Excellent. All right, thank you, Cody. Um, so yes, I am Bray Webb, and I'm presenting work with my supervisors pictured here, Ian Hayes and Mark Utting. And our overall research goal is we want to verify the correctness of optimizations within the GraalVM compiler. So by a show of hands, who's heard of GraalVM? Way more than I expected. Okay, so we're still going to go over, introduce it, um, and then using that background, we're going to motivate why we might want to um, verify specifically the optimization passes of GraalVM and then overview the specific contributions of this paper towards that big overarching goal. So GraalVM, um, what is it? It's an optimizing just-in-time compiler built on top of the JVM. Um, it's open source and it's written in Java, and it's a polyglot compiler. So on top of all of the JVM languages that you would expect, um, it supports a whole range of different languages and you can pick your favorite language and hopefully it's supported here. A lot of these have support through um, LLVM, um, but some of them use Graal's partial evaluation mechanism um, to host a whole range of different languages. So just to explain that very briefly, if you've not seen it before, if we have a very simple custom language that looks like this, it's just prefix addition um, that's adding 20 to a variable x. Um, we might expect to write an interpreter for that language that looks something like what we've got in the top left there, um, that evaluates the left-hand side of the operation and evaluates the right-hand side, adds them together and returns it. Now, partial evaluation allows us to sort of inline the source code from the hosted language into our compiler to get something that looks like what we've got on the right there. Um, so that corresponds to what you might write in Java to implement this program. The nice thing about this approach, uh, partial evaluation, is if we introduce a little bit of redundancy down in our source program and we have add 20 to 20, um, that turns out to be 20 plus 20 in Java. So we can uh, expect that our Java compiler, our Java optimizer, is going to see that and it's going to be able to optimize that. So we get to sort of share some of the optimizations um, of Graal in our source language, which is nice when it works. Um, some other notable features of GraalVM that make it particularly appealing and interesting to people is that it's got ahead of time compilation support, which is useful if you're doing cloud computing because you want that quick startup um, and it's got tool support for profiling and debugging that we've come to expect. I'm not trying to do an ad, just noting it. Um, so, the motivation for our research into verifying the optimization phase. Um, so, when I say that this is our goal, I'm hoping that you have at least two questions in your head. Uh, why verify just the optimizations of the compiler? Why have we narrowed down to that? And why the focus on GraalVM? So for the first one, uh, there's this paper from 2010, um, and what they did is they used fuzz testing to generate a whole bunch of C programs um, and ran those C programs through different implementations of the C compiler and looked for any discrepancies in the behavior, any compiler that's doing something different, and identified bugs from there, categorized those bugs, and reported them that in this paper. And what they found was that in GCC, of the 79 bugs that they found, about 75 of them were in the optimization phase of the compiler, so 90%. And in Clang, where they found 202 bugs, 183 of them were for, from the optimization phase. So it's a particularly bug-prone part of the compiler. Um, and I'm sure you're all wondering, what about CompCert? So there's the concert number. So two overall, zero in the optimization phase, but those two were in unverified components of the compiler, which were later verified, so we're going to 
chalk that one up to a win for concert. <laughs> so why verify GraalVM? We've got a whole list of reasons here. It's got a comprehensive optimization suite. That just gives us a bunch to play with. Um, it is being actively developed, which means that we get to work with the Graal development team to find out what they need from us, how we can integrate our work, how we can help them. Um, and they're a very research-focused team, so they've got a whole bunch of publications on what they do in Graal, and they implement the latest from Popple conferences. Um, it is becoming more widely used, um, so big companies, Facebook and Twitter, are starting to use it, um, partially because of its uh, native compilation and a whole range of other features. Um, and number four is that hosted language partial evaluation feature. The hosted languages really do rely on the optimizations, otherwise they'd be pretty useless because they would not be at all comparable with tailor-made compilers for the hosted languages. They'd be slow, they'd be sluggish, so they need to have optimizations. You can't just flip them off, um, and those optimizations need to be correct. So that's our motivation. So let's talk very briefly, no, for the rest of the talk, about our contributions uh, in this paper. So the first contribution is that we've done refinement proofs for um, expression optimizations using term rewriting. So refinement just meaning if we've got E1 and E2, and E2 refines E1, E2 is a valid replacement for E1. Now, we've done it via term rewriting, which seems obvious, but I'll just explain a bit about why it's not. So we've got very simple expression here, and Compilers 101 would have taught you this looks something like this when represented in a compiler. Just a simple abstract syntax tree. And that's nice, because what that allows us to do is to express optimizations as term rewriting rules. So we can apply both of these term rewriting rules to the AST. So the first one gets applied to eliminate the redundancy in the left-hand side of the tree. And the second one takes care of the rest, so we turn that big, messy expression into just the variable y. Um, so that's nice, and that's the theory. Expressions are abstract syntax trees or terms. They get optimized through term rewriting, and we can define semantics over the term structure, and everything's nice and easy. But that's not the practice. So in practice, um, Graal represents expressions using the C of nodes graph data structure, um, which means that optimizations get performed via graph updates. Um, and some of the complications is that to be efficient, it shares any common sub-expressions. So if we look at an AST here that has a lot of shared expressions, a lot of reused expressions, we can collapse that down by sharing the X node. We can collapse that further into its maximally shared form to get something that looks like this which is a graph structure, which is messy to reason about. So what we found in our earlier work was we defined the semantics and optimizations as graph rewrites, um, and they were difficult. They were tricky, and we didn't like them very much. So for these four um, rules that are really quite straightforward, um, sorry, five rules, uh, we had to have 58 lines of proofs to show that they're correct. Um, and that may be because we're not total Isabel experts, which is fair. Um, but it's still much more complicated than we need it. Okay? So the reason, or part of the reason for this is that graph updates can affect anything that shares it. So you're not just optimizing in isolation, you're optimizing sort of in a context where we can introduce cycles and we, we can have self-reference. So what that might look like here is if we have two seemingly equivalent sub-expressions, E1 and E2, and we replace them, that should be fine on its own. They're equivalent sub-expressions. But if E1 directly or indirectly references itself, which is perfectly valid for the graph structure, um, we get a whole bunch of complications. So we have to give an inductive proof that just says it's fine. It's semantically preserved, so of course, yes, yes, yes. Um, which was more tricky than we needed. So instead, in this paper, we sort of stepped through, extract, 
abstracting the graph representation into a term representation, and a little preview of how we approach that. So pretending you've got a IR graph structure, um, if you take the root node of a sub-expression n, then this says that that root node represents the expression of the term e. Okay? And then we can define uh, evaluation semantics on that expression. Given a method context C, the expression E evaluates to a value V. Then we can go ahead and define refinement. So we say that E2 refines E1 if in all contexts, um, if E1 evaluates to a value in a context C, then E2 has to evaluate to the same value in the same context. Okay? And that gives us this, which is sort of the reason that we're allowed to lift all of our term rewriting optimizations to the graph level. Um, and this is the fundamental one that we use to prove a bunch of other things. But we just say if we've got a valid refinement of two expressions, and we've got two graphs where the only differing node in those two graphs is at node n, and in G1, n represents E1, in G2, n represents E2, then G2 is a refinement of G1. Okay? So, this means that refinements on terms, they're, they're easier to define and they're easier to prove. So where we had 58 lines of proof before, with the help of a couple of tactics, um, we cut that down to just three lines for all five optimizations. A lot of them we can automatically discharge. Um, right, so that's the first contribution. And number two is in this paper we sort of introduce a domain-specific language to express these optimizations in Isabel Hull, and those rules you saw earlier were using that language. Um, so uh, this is a very Java-like syntax because we want the compiler developers to be able to express optimizations in it um, and write their own and hopefully automatically discharge them. Um, but the, the DSL generates soundness and termination proof obligations. So just a little example for people familiar with Isabel. Um, first thing to note is that because Growl can undo optimizations that other phases do, there's no global termination measure. So what we do just for the moment is we parameterize each optimization phase by a termination measure. And here that's just term. And then we say, when we write an optimization that looks like that, we get out two proof obligations. The first one's pretty straightforward. It's the refinement proof obligation that says that this has to be a valid, correct optimization. And then the second one is just saying that the termination measure for the right-hand side has to be strictly less than the left-hand side, which means that at least within a phase, we can show that we have termination. Okay, so that's sort of our working DSL, and that gets us most of the way there. And then the last little step is to develop a workflow that allows compiler developers to start expressing optimizations in Growl and get out, uh, generated output. So this is just really very simple. Really. Um, we have a optimization for a subnode. So this is optimizing a subnode. And this is what we saw before, this optimization expressed here. So we just go through and we annotate parts of the compiler with rewriting rules like so give them a name, and then we can go and extract all of those from the compiler, verify that we've got a proof for that optimization and that it matches, um, and then the Graal developers can say, yes, this section looks good, we don't have to worry about it, assuming that it matches it. Okay, so just to conclude, we've got some good motivations for um, why we're interested in verifying Graal VM specific optimizations. Um, we've developed a framework to verify the very many complex um, expression optimizations scattered throughout Graal as term rewrites. We've got infrastructure to express these optimizations. 
generate proof obligations, and automatically apply a whole range of tactics um, to try and discharge as many proof obligations as we can, um, or simplify. And we've got started the work on integrating this back into the Graal compiler so that the developers can start working with it. Um, in future work, formalize a strategy to combine these optimization rules together so that we have an order of application um, and we can start thinking about termination between phases. Um, automatically generate code which implements these optimizations so that we can completely replace the sections of code um, that perform these optimizations with our one. So we've got a mechanism that does this, but it generates really unpleasant code that you wouldn't want to have in your compiler. So we're going to need to hack at that to, to make it acceptable. Um, and lastly, is to just in, continue investigating more techniques for control flow optimizations and how we can simplify that process. And that's all, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Okay, we're once again in the incredibly lucky situation of being early, so uh, are there any questions? Thank you. Um, can you comment a little bit on the kind of expression that you're allowing in your graphs? Right. So are they pure? Yes. So these expressions have to be side effect free. So they're based on the sea of nodes data structure, which has a distinction between control flow and data flow. And anything that's side affecting has to go through the control flow path. Um, whereas we've got expressions as side effect free subgraphs and we're focused primarily on that because there's just a lot of optimizations for those types of optimizations expressions and and can you can you say a little bit more how do you handle memory do you i mean do you do you handle uh, memory instruction optimizations or not so not for this particular thing we we have a semantics for control flow optimizations, and we can handle um, load fields, store fields, what have you there. But we haven't really defined a easy way to do that. So the proofs are pretty laborious and manual if we want to do uh, optimizations of side affecting operations. Um, yeah, so it's Thank a work in progress. Thank you. Other questions? So when you uh, talk about termination here, are okay. you talking about the termination of applying one rewrite rule to the whole graph all at once? So like I have a collection of rewrite rules and... It's the termination of a phase. So within a particular optimization phase, um, as long as the termination measure is decreasing for every rule, you can apply them as, as many times as, well, finitely as many times as you want and in whatever order and it's still going to terminate. Are there syntactic criteria for your rules you could look at that tell you that it'll always terminate? So you have... Like, like something like it's left linear and there's some... Like, like there are a bunch of these things in term rewriting and maybe some of them apply to this setting, but it seems a little different, so I was wondering if you... Um, well, the, the advantage of using the trees is that this, they have to somewhat be finite by definition. Um, so within one single optimization rule, it's sort of implicitly finite because it's a term, but we're looking at terminating for a whole phase, no matter how you apply those rules. I, I do want to know that the one rule he showed was not left linear. <laughs> so, so that one is... That one is out, but yeah. Um, I actually have a quick question. Yep. Um, th this seems pretty non GraalVM specific. Could you imagine building this into its own tool where it's like, hey, give us your term rewrite rules, we'll optimize it into this maximally shared tree, and then we'll 
do all your optimization passes for you, and here's a very convenient library in yeah. some somewhat inconvenient language. So certainly, um, the fact that we have abstracted it into this tree-based representation means that it is fairly generic. And then if other languages, other intermediate representations, wanted to reuse this, really all they'd have to come up with is something to get their representation into a term form, and then all of our uh, optimization is pretty transferable. Okay. Any other questions? All right, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>